This is HR Legal Issues. I'm your host today, Carl Williams, temporarily. Hassan should be here soon. And uh, we're going to get right to it today. Today is what I want to talk about. I've been keeping you updated with that $45 parking fee. And they haven't responded as of yet. This is going on for about a month, which they are supposed to, anytime you send something in, they're supposed to automatically accept it. Now, it may take them some time to reach a decision on what it is that you're talking about or whatever the issue is. But when you send something in, it's not supposed to take no 30 days just for them to, to notify you that they got it and they're processing it. It don't take no 45 days to process it. I can see if they overload it and they're getting a lot of complaints, a lot of uh, feedback on this particular issue, but nobody has really sent a written response. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of verbal responses or complaints, but very few, if any, have been filing any written complaints. So the next step is, I, they got into Thursday because they told me between Tuesday and Thursday is when the administrative judge arrived. And those is the time when they didn't make decision. So apparently he's not there Monday through Friday. He's just there on Tuesday, from Tuesday to, I guess, Friday. So that's where we're at now. And probably I'm going to give them to this Thursday. And if nothing, they don't tell me anything or I don't receive anything because I'm calling them every week because before they said that they sent me some information, they said that they sent me a notice, but I never received a notice. So uh, we was at an impasse, so what I did, I filed a petition for a hearing on this. So we will see what's going to happen. I'm going to give them to Thursday. The time will be up. Actually, the time is up now. I'm just being generous. So Thursday. So next Tuesday, you'll know exactly what's happening on that. And the next issue that I was going to talk about was this uh, drainage fee. Yeah, everybody's talking about the drainage. So what I did, I brought a bill in from, yeah, this last month. This is in May. And I wanted to look at something because I thought it was a little strange. Uh, okay, they got on here. Sewage disposable, 10.55. Sewage service, six dollars and four cent. So that's sixteen dollars and fifty nine cent. Drainage charge, twenty dollars and sixty three cent. Now, how in the world can my drainage be more than my sewage when my drainage, um, there's there's nothing. I mean, the drainage, you know, the water just drains. They don't have to put no chemicals in it. They don't have to do anything in it. And the sewage and the drainage go in the same single pipe. It's no two different pipes. It's one pipe. But yet and still, my drainage costs more than my sewage, which is two charges, disposable, and the service charge. Now, that alone on its face makes it uh, very suspicious. I'm just going to say suspicious, but it's wrong. Hey, well, Carl, what about, what about uh, like this month and last month when we didn't get too much rain? All these hot days, they charge me for the days that it don't rain too, don't they? Oh, well, you, well see, they're the arbitrary. 
They don't. They can't be going by that because that was the case. They'd be on us money. Right. So you know they just they're, they're gangsters. They exactly stick up right. Artists. Ain't nothing but stick up artists. They gonna rob the citizens of their money. That's what that's mm -hmm. all about. They gonna take it. But here's the key to the whole thing, which we told you when we read the case, both versus the city of Lansing state that that's the Michigan State Supreme Court said that it's voluntarily. So, you know, like I said before and I've been saying, where's the law? So since it's voluntary, you just you you could send something in if you get receive anything and state that you're not you not voluntarily want to participate in this program and just state the case. Lansing, um, boat versus the city of Lansing. And well, that's how it go, but they don't. If you're talking about the gangsters at the city. Oh, yeah, I know the gangsters. They don't care. They're shutting your water off. Look at Gangster Snyder. Shut the water off at Flint, poison them, need to poison them, give them, put lead in the world, and say, you need to get over it. Yeah, because he was protected by the Attorney General. Bill Schuette, who's running for governor. For governor. So yeah. why would you want somebody in here who was attorney general? That's his job. His job was to protect the citizen, not Governor Snyder. And he never raised that issue. He never said anything. Now he's trying to run for office. Now he's trying to he put a few peons in that, that he's trying to prosecute. All of those were the pointee. Now, one elected official have I heard that he have tried or attempted to prosecute. So it's all a game. But if you don't know the rules, they get away with it. So it's up to us, to, and that's what we are here to do, to inform you what the rules are. Why would anybody in their right mind vote Republican for any of these state officials, governor, attorney general, any of these folks in the state of Michigan. You said the key question, in their right mind. And I, I know people say, well, the Democrats have problems. They don't have a problem of poisoning people, do they? I mean, you, you're talking some serious stuff. That's right. You got the governor tells the mayor of Flint, Mayor Weaver, just get over it. Get over it. Ain't that Just something? get over just it. Just get over it. And the attorney general refuses to see it. Refuses to say anything. Ain't that he don't see it. Well, he, he refuses to do his job. So he takes the long way around. The attorney general used to be an appeals court judge. So he know the law. Michigan huh? appeal court judge. He knows the game. You think he's doing something great. So he started off, we're going to get the governor. We're going to do this. And half of the people that you thought was on your side protesting against yes. the governor or against them dropping the, the lead in the water, they weren't on your side no. because they never asked about it. No. They never asked about it. How did it take you a year and a half to know the lead is a poison? Nobody knew. You know, oh, we didn't know that. Really? All the landlords know it was a poison. You know, you, so you got all these crazy people walking around. Now you don't hear them saying nothing. No, uh -uh. they want to hear like saying nothing. All right. So everything must be all right for them. Everything must be all right for them. But uh, getting the two those uh, charter provisions, especially the one where oh, they want to yeah. open up the mm. city charter mm. on the ballot, vote no. I would vote no follow. That's right. We don't. We didn't put them on there. The only one we put on there was that uh, initiative, the ballot initiative to get rid of Proposition Four. Was it four before they brought in Four Thirty Six? Right. Wasn't it? That's right. And, and it was successful. And that, that's the one the citizens voted on, or put on the ballot. All these special interest groups are putting these ballots on, ballot initiative on to divvy up our money. And you may say, how? Oh, that's just what they're doing. The marijuana. They haven't said anything about letting the people out of jail that has been convicted of selling marijuana. How are you going to have legal marijuana and let these people languish in jail for 20 and 30 years? Hmm. 
Well, the majority of them were black and Latinos, black and yeah. brown, so what do they care? And they got some poor white folks they threw in there. They call that collateral damage. They don't care. So who are the victims? Why are we supporting them? And you know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We want to pass the buck. And by me, we to say the old school, old school generation, the retirees, old folks now, you the old folks now, all them, you want to, you want to pass the buck and say, well, I, I don't understand this young generation. Girl, do you know what they're doing? They're not doing what they said. We didn't have that. Yeah. Yeah, what was the problem? What is the, you know, when you look at it, if you want to take a real close look and examine the facts, the problem is you want to be your sons and daughters' friends. You want to be your grandchildren's friends. That's the problem. You can't be their friend. How can a parent be the child's friend? How can the grandparent be your granddaughter, grandson's friend, your nephew's friend? No, no, no. You are there to support and mentor your grandchildren and your children. A friend doesn't buy clothes for, the, for, the, for their friend. They're, they don't have any, any law or any provision saying, oh, I'm your friend, I have to support you, I've got to buy clothes for you, I have to feed you. I have to make sure you have some shelter, some place to go and sleep that's warm in the winter. Friends don't do that. That's the problem. You want to be the kid's friend. Yeah. You want to be your children's friend. You need to go back and look up the definition of what a parent is. What parenting is? What yeah. a parent is? A supporter. You know, we didn't like what our parents told us, and that's a... You know, I guess that left a, a bit of taste in people's mouth. You know, especially the guys, you know. Uh, and, and it's funny how you, you, you sit around and people you don't even know, they didn't grow up with, they, they come in from another city, another state, but everybody got the same story. Man, my old man wouldn't tell you twice. My father wouldn't tell you twice. He just look at you. That's it. And you know what that meant. Don't let him have to get up. That meant don't let him have to tell you twice. But that kept most of us out of jail, didn't it? That's right. Didn't that keep most of us out of trouble? And respect. You have more respect for your parents. And if we had a, I wouldn't say we, but if they had a known what that heroin, them penny caps, them T's and blues, if they had a knew what that was all about, it wouldn't have been no drug problem because they would have beat the cowboy crap out of you. They would have beat right. the cowboy mess out of you. They had a new, that's what you was using, and what it would have done, to, what it would do to you. We had never experienced any of that in this country, folks from the South, even in the North. You know, I know y'all always say, ah, oh, man, you know, we were here. You know, it was a lot of people that had some of that. Well, you didn't because you didn't have any money to buy. They weren't giving it away. Except when they started off. Except when they started off. That's how they got people hooked on it. They gave it away. Man, got some callers on the line. Yeah, you got, yeah, a couple of them. Caller, you on there? Praise the Lord. Hello. 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 I thank both of you gentlemen for being so truthful. Our parents didn't tolerate that. We got to understand when we have children, we have to be responsible individuals. Don't be concerned with yourself, but now you have a human being to be responsible for and nurture and raise. Also, we got to stop letting the preachers decide who we should vote for. Whoever they tell us to vote for, please run away from that candidate. <laughs> I can't understand when a person has been in office, served, got the vote, hasn't done anything, and then you want to promote them. I want anybody to call in and tell me 
what the president of the city council has done for us. Also, I want anyone to tell me what Whitmer has done for us. No one can read, win that race without winning Detroit. So now they're all coming to Detroit. We only have one candidate that mentioned getting the people out of prison, education, which is the most important thing, and that is Shree. And we have been talking about, oh, he's fine. We were all fine, came here one way or another. You vote for the candidate that would do something for you. If that candidate can't do anything for you or hasn't done anything for you, don't vote for him. And you know we got to send Coleman Young to Congress. He's the only one to know how to do legislation. And you know he's a fighter. He's already checking and make sure a qualified person take his seat when he goes to Washington. And believe me, we better put the right people in office and stop dividing the vote. That's why the Republicans get in. They don't split the vote like we do. Whoever wins the primary, that's it. And Coleman Young and Shree going to get in in the name of Jesus. And I thank you both for taking my call because you keep on up with everything. I look forward to listening to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello, Carl. You on the line? Hi. Good, good morning, Carl and Hassan. Hi. Uh, I'm hearing an echo, so if I'm sounding kind of weird, I'll just keep going. But anyway, I'm just wondering, since you were talking about what you were talking about earlier for the first caller, what happened? Where did the ball get dropped with this generation of people that we're living with now that I don't understand, and I'm sure you don't either? It's like they... Uh, consider themselves privileged or something or what they want don't want to do nothing they don't want to vote i mean you get them in homes uh they tear them up all this tra- i have never seen so much trash in detroit in my whole life and i was born here and a friend of mine and myself were speaking the other night they said uh do you remember as a kid stepping up with whiskey bottles and beer cans and baby diapers and all this kind of junk all out in the street and I said, no. And it seems like people just have gotten so used to it that they don't even notice it. But this place is nasty. And it's nasty because we got some nasty people here. Who didn't raise these kids or who did raise them to not care about something? And I don't care how rich or how poor you are whatever, you take pride in where you reside. That's what I grew up with, and I'm hearing you people say the same thing that your parents wouldn't have it. And it didn't matter if you had 18 kids, 12 kids, or one kid, you kept out in front of your house nice. I don't know what it looked like inside, but you kept your property up. And you just walk down the street and throw your dinners out there and your diapers out. And these people throw them out like the cops and everywhere. And all in front of these businesses are nasty, dirty. I don't get it. But then you go across 8 Mile or into another city, everything is pristine. Now, go figure. Do you guys have any comment on that? Well, you can start with the city because when you go across 8 Mile, you will see sweet, uh, street sweepers going up and down the side streets, the residential streets, sweeping the city streets. We don't have that in the city of Detroit. Once in a while, it's election time, the mayor brought them out. You know, uh, Dennis Archer, he brought them out during election time. And but Duggan, same thing. Same mm-hmm. thing, Duggan. And, uh, you know, a, a good example though is, is Ham Tramick. You ride by Ham Tramick, you don't see any garbage in the alleys. You sure don't. They sweep the alleys, and they meaning the tenant, the owner, the homeowner. Most of those folks are homeowners. And 
there has always been this cliche, I call it a cliche, about a dumb Polak, a dumb Polish person. But you can't see that when you go to their neighborhoods because they keep your the property up. That's right. It's clean. So who the dummies? You know, people will talk, but you don't have to answer to what they're calling you. And it seems to me that they don't answer to that. They got well, their I own grew store. Up, uh, Kyle and Hassan, very, very close to him, trying to, and I can remember when it was Polish dominated, women out scrubbing sidewalks and the uh, aluminum siding, and they were super duper clean with their property. Okay, because I guess they appreciated being there. They came from over in Poland, probably in war torn areas and everything, and they appreciated their property. But it was the same. On the north end, where I grew up, not to say that anybody was scrubbing sidewalks, but people weren't throwing it down at that kind of level. Yes, we had street cleaners and everything, but what is going on? Why are you dumping your car? Out? Why are you throwing baby diapers and dinners and stuff in the street? Where does that come from? Well, a lot of it comes from the, the, mm. the child is raising itself, and it's the parent wants to be friends with their children. You know, you can't be a parent and a friend. You know, they don't want to mad at them, that kind of thing. All you see them out there pouting and carrying on, and if you see the child acting a fool and the parent don't open their mouth. Now, you know, you didn't see any black folks acting a fool in the store. Not I don't care really. what grocery uh -uh. store, what line you was in, how long the line was, you didn't see them acting no fool. No. Because they know what was going to happen to them. And you know what, Kyle, one of my other theories, and I could be wrong, Something happened in the household, too, where people don't eat in the house no more. I mean, you know, I, I, I know you may not do the leave it the beaver thing and everybody sits around the table at the same time anymore, but I don't think that people are training their kids to eat indoors, period. I've noticed people eating at the bus stop, walking and eating with their styrofoam cups and dinners, and, and they throw it in the street. They just don't even eat in the house no more from what I can see. It's a lot of that. It's yeah. a lot of that transient uh, behavior, and uh, people just don't care. And nobody, and, you know, they don't get a ticket. They don't get a fine for that. Yeah. There are other things for the police to do uh, besides, the, you know, they got to go get their coffee and donuts the way it still look around here. They're all downtown in Greek town somewhere. But they are definitely, hey, you know, we've got to do something. And the we is a generation now because... If yeah. you can see, if you and your friends can see that there's a problem, the problem is going to be bigger. It's going to be exasperated because the, the folks we're talking about, the millennium, don't know what to do. So we got to start telling. We, it's got to be a line of demarcation somewhere. We got to draw I a line agree. in the same. And what you said about fines and things, I think that's where it has to start. I think you have to give some firm structure on people who have none, okay? Now, I myself have called on uh, businesses uh, up and down Seven Mile and all this kind of stuff, and I went through a lot of hassle down at the city just trying to get somebody to come out and write them a ticket, you know, for all this junk out in front of their places, because I won't go into places like that. If I see all that out front, I'm not going to give them my service. Okay, mm -hmm. but it just seems to be acceptable in Detroit that you step over some styrofoam boxes and some beer bottles and whiskey bottles and stuff to go into somebody's business. And I'm not doing it. But I did call, and they put me through a bunch of hands before it. Bill. Well, one thing is that, that in the other communities, they don't tolerate that. No. Nope. But you hear people talk about, but how many people to call downtown and complain about these businesses doing this. See, if enough complaints get in downtown, they come. somebody will come out and give them a ticket or threaten to give them a ticket and they'll stop. We'll clean it up. And, and, and you know, in my, in my situation, the man was very nasty to me when I called. He says, I, well, so-and-so has a permit and a health department. Blah, blah. You wouldn't want them to know your business if it was you. I said, look, I don't care about that. The front, well, I do care about the inside with the health department. Yeah, I do. But it was just his attitude. He was very, very nasty to me uh, about just calling down and saying something. And if the excuse was, we don't have enough workers. We don't have enough people to come out and serve all these permits and blah, blah, blah. So hire somebody then. I mean, we pay in taxes like everybody else. It was, and if anybody else may call in that might have experienced that, they could probably back me up on it. But it was not 
very professional the way it's handled down there. And I got to run around. They first called me to, told me to call DTC, you know, where the garbage piece up people are. I was switched around to a lot of different agencies before I actually got to where I needed to be. And I haven't seen any improvement, even though I did call them. I haven't seen anything going on. Well, you have to be persistent and you have to be patient. But one thing you need to do, whoever that person was, you need to get their name. Yeah. And you need to file a complaint against them. Yeah, because that was Whoever they supervise it is, you need to send it to their supervisor. Ago, I used to live in North Rosedale Park, and I had the garbage can sit out there, and people still didn't use them. Maybe that's what you and your neighborhood need to do is put some garbage cans out in front of these businesses. I said, well, they're not my businesses. Why should I have to put the garbage cans out in front of them? You know, put their own garbage cans up. You know, it was that kind of attitude. Very nasty. Well, you're going to get that from them, but I'm going to say it again. Uh-huh. You have to be persistent. They, you got people down there that does that intentionally, you know, but you need to get their name and their name and their position, and whoever they supervise it, send it to their supervisor. See, a person, when they get in supervision, they don't want to hear no complaint, and they don't want to really don't want to be involved. You'll get Agreed. more results Agreed. by doing that than you know just continue talking to them because it's obvious they're not going to do anything. You know what I'm gonna do, Kyle and Hassan? I'm gonna make a call down there on their next show. I'm gonna call and put them on blast. I'm gonna give some names and some phone numbers, and maybe we can get a coalition of people who can start really calling down there and get this person down because. It's happening all over the city. It's just not my neighborhood. It's everywhere. You know, yeah, it all is. around Detroit, you can tell just as good when you're in the Detroit city limits, you see all this trash and all this filth. And you go to somebody else's city, don't care how small or how big, outside of Highland Park, because Highland Park got some issues too. But for the most part, yeah, it's Detroit Highland Park. Yeah, you will. You know, when you get them people together and y'all do the phone calls, then follow it up with some written complaints because the written complaints is not going to go away. It's going to be there. And then sure. you got something tangible in your hand because you're going to keep a copy for yourself that you can always refer to. Great idea. That's why I called you guys. You guys are on top of everything, and I'm so glad you spent some time with me. And I will follow up on it. And when I get some names and numbers, I'm going to call and put them on blast because I don't care. I'm sick of my city looking like a garbage dump. And that's just what it looks like. Well, when you do that, when you get ready to do it, when you send it in, call us and let us know. I certainly will. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carl, are you on the air? Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, I've worked five years in a methadone clinic. I got that job when I was 25 in 1997, and this is what I would like to share to the listen, with the listeners. You were right when you said the penny caps and the T's and blues is what started what we see today. Um, opium was used as a chemical warfare that was used turned into heroin by Germans and other Western and Central European company. Every human takes a chance on a new get high. And I'm sure that's what the Nixon um, cabinet thought about. During the civil rights and the Black Panther movement, the, uh, the lack of education on the opium wars that European nations caused and placed against China was the same method that they used against the civil rights movement and the Black Panther. If no blacks <laughs> of your generation, you two gentlemen listening, would not stand up and find enough people to uh, admit the fact that heroin was used as part of a chemical warfare against us nationwide, then a lot of my generation, I was born in 72. So I have to thank the creator, my father and mother, were not users or sellers of cannabis. That drug is what caused the chain reaction of what we're seeing today. From heroin to crack to
to ecstasy, to molly, to promethazine with codeine. We have went from a downer from the 60s, a upper, that was the crack, and we're right back at a downer. Um, I work at a barbershop. Uh, I remember when white people didn't want working black people in this community. Now we're dealing with blacks that we don't even want to see come to our place of business. So until your generation nationwide can let everyone know that heroin and drug dealing, not drug users, drug dealing is what helps our community stay in the, in the state that it's in. And thank you. Thank you for thank making you. it here. Well, he's absolutely right. Right, yeah. That's the drug epidemic that they are hiding from everybody. We know the effects of it, but the white folks, a lot of them don't know it, and they are hiding it. And now it's almost like, oh, my God. Oh, what happened? What happened to my child? Do you know what happened when a, when a, a, a parent loses a child? Now, mind you, the child's not 18. There's a lot of them overdosing at 18, but this is somebody 30 or 35, <laughs> maybe 40. They don't believe that that heroin, that those opioids, they don't respect religion. They don't respect color. They don't respect if you're male or female. All of them drugs will put you in the ground. You know, he said something that was important, and I think that even though the kids are like they are today, we have to still tell them about this, and we have to show them how in our time the same thing happened. So, they, you know, because we tell them that there ain't nothing new under the sun. History repeats We have to itself. show them. History repeats itself. And we have to show them by example what had happened before and what they called it then, just like he said, with opioids and what they call it now, and back then was crack, but the, the effects was the same. Say it was mixed jive. You know, I, I remember asking the person, oh, yeah. I say, why, what is mixed jive? Just why why do they thought. call it mixed jive? You say because it's a jive, it's not real <laughs> hell, and it may be a little pinch in there, but they take anything else quinine and mix it in yeah. with it and all that stuff. You see all the holes and bumps and, and <laughs> all kind of stuff. Look like craters in a person's face and on their hands. They get them sores and they just won't heal from the drug use. That's right. Hands and arms swole up. You got women walking around still looking like Popeye. You know, Popeye the sailor with the big arms and big hands. Yeah, that's what it does. That's the extreme effect of that drug on the body. And then life is cut short. Oh, yeah. And then you're not talking about how many people's lives have been wrecked. You know, they, 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 the, the children have to go to foster care. They weren't raised with their mothers and fathers. A lot of them left, you know, was broken up when they were uh, under 10 years of age. You know, four and five, two and three. Some of them never met their fathers and mothers until they were 30 years old or 20. And then what are the lucky ones? What about the ones that never met their parents? What about the ones that never met their parents and cousins? They don't know one from another. So it, it's a, we need to talk about it. And that'll stop half of this foolishness that's going on around here, this craziness. When they think, you know, there's an effect on them. Because they think that they're less than, and you hear them say, well, I have nothing to lose. Because they don't have anything. So what do I have to lose? That's what the, how they feel. And you wonder how, you wonder about people, and believe me, they have a problem. They'll talk about, look at the schools right now today. Look at the schools. Well, well we got all these children, especially the boys, and they don't know how to act. They act up. They're hyper. No, they're not hyper. They're not hyper. They don't want to be in the classroom, let alone the school, because they're not with their parents. Maybe they had a lot with their foster parents. 
Maybe the foster parents saying they're going to another foster parent. Maybe this is the sixth or seventh foster parent they've been with. The schools don't take any of that into consideration, at least the teacher does it. It's new to most of us. It's new, and then, you know, they got too many kids in there, you know, they, they can't take the time to do it. And that's but, the way they, they established. This system was created to fail for us. Well, it was created to call division, to keep people wondering what's going on, keep them going around in circles, and keep them fighting among themselves. And then any time a teacher or the school doesn't even know, hey, did they got to stay busy? Did they got to show some compassion for these children? You know, most of the special education classes that they have in the schools, that's who's in the special education classes. Not that they're slow. Not that they're actually dysfunctional. It's because they come from broken homes or they're in a foster home. When you come from a broken home, that's usually where they put you at, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, so they're in a foster care environment where the people don't care. Some of them do, but the majority of them are just there for the money. And you may say, well, how do you know that? How can you say that? I'm looking at the results. I'm looking at the results. If you show a child any kind of uh, attention, they're going to grab hold of you. They're going to grab right. for that. If you show them any kind of attention. You know, it's, it's a young man that calls me his father. You know, he said, well, this is my stepfather. Uh, he helped raise me, which I did. You know, and, and it was a situation where his mother had a problem, which was drugs. And when I would see him and do little things with him, I said, okay, come on. Uh what do you want to do? And uh, I said, okay, come on, uh, let's let's go get something to eat. Take him to McDonald's or something. I said, okay, get the lawnmower, help me cut the grass. You know, you give him something to do. Yeah. You show a young man what he has to do to be responsible as a young man. Because he's going to grow up to have children, believe it or not. He's going to have his own family. And somebody's got to say to him without a long lecture, hey, you know, you're somebody, let's do this, let's do that. And he tells me to the day, he say, man, I tell people all the time, I wanted some, what was it, Air Force Ones or something. And I say, you really? What you think, I'm going to buy them for you? I said, I tell you what, come on, I got some grass for you to cut. So when he cut it, his, what was that, 50 or $60, <laughs> whatever it was, it was some high gym shoes back then, that was a lot of money for us, Oh, sir. yeah, shit. And uh, like a hundred dollars, not yeah, shit. maybe two hundred. But anyway, <laughs> he 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 worked for those, and there it is. I got Milan's cut, and he got his gym shoes. He got his money to buy what he wanted to buy with. See, that's the thing. We're giving children money. We're gonna give them some money for nothing. They didn't do anything. They didn't work for that money. That's not how it works out here. See, but one one thing you left out, you showed them independence. Oh, yeah. He had to do it. <laughs> Wasn't nobody going to give him something. He had to earn it. Well, I told him that every time I saw him. And so he's working right now. What is he, 47? He's got a job. He's got a family, a wife, and three or four kids. You know, he's living, well, I guess out in Warren, out in the suburbs. He's got a house. So he's doing okay. It's not like they're not going to make it. Some people believe they're not going to make it. Survival of the fittest. And survival of the first instinct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're going to make it. All we got to do is point them in the right direction. That's right. And these people will be productive citizens. And, you know, when I talk to him from time to time, he said, he'll tell me, he said, well, you know, I come back to the hood. I come back just to look at my roots and see where things are going. And then he may tell me something about his job. He works out at Costco. He's a manager now. And, you know, he said, he say. You know, they try to run that okie doke on me. He said, I just sit there and laugh at them. They don't know nothing about me or where I come from. They don't know I'm from Detroit. <laughs> 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 hey, that's the way people talk. You know, even Detroiters look at them. I mean, I don't care. All these uppity up and bourgeoisies mm. and folks, 
that's walking around here in front of us today, believe me, when they go out of town or they get pressed and push come to shove, they got to come back on some of that Detroit, don't they? That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's it. Let's take a call. Call, are you on there? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, you're on the ahead. air. Go ahead. Happy Tuesday to both of you. We can't hear you. Can you speak up? Yeah. Happy Tuesday to both of you. Okay. okay. Happy Tuesday to All you. All right. I, um, uh, I, wanna, I have a question. Could research it meeting this family? You got to talk time? into the phone or you something because you're fading out. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Could research is meeting this Saturday at the table center? On Grand River and Wyoming, there is a question that we're asking, and there's a prize for the correct answer. The question is, why are manhole covers round? You, you know, you got a bad connection, a bad phone, or something. We can't even hear that question. The question is what? Why are manhole covers round? Did you get that? You must be moving around. But yeah. Hood Research is having a meeting this Saturday, the Davo Center, 2 to 6, uh -huh. and you need to come on out. Yeah. And, um, and, um, well, you know what? Call us back, Theo. Maybe we can get a better connection. Is this better? Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Stay there. Okay. This Saturday at uh, the Davo Center, Grand River, Wyoming, the question is, why are manhole covers round? And the person that gets the correct answer gets a prize. The, the, the second issue has to do with the um, election. Absentee ballots have been sent out, and we need to let people know to vote no on that proposal. The proposal that is, is uh, being put forth is should we open the charter? The answer is no, we should not open the charter. You can always make uh, amendments to the charter. If you want to make amendments, you can do that. But you don't need to open the whole charter for people to uh, fiddle around with. It appears that there is a... Uh, opportunity for the mayor's office to become stronger than it is. And that's something that we need to be concerned about. And therefore, voting no on the charter is the best thing to do. All right. Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yep. Vote no on that city no, charter. No, no, no. They're trying to sneak in a lot of stuff. For instance, Kevin Orr. And the emergency manager, when he was here, he changed a lot of things. And he says, well, Kevin, like the Citizens District Council, they are no longer, you might well say, in existence because the city clerk doesn't even send out a mailing, does she? No. Uh -uh. I, I used to get them. I used to get the, the thing to tell you uh, April was going to be the date that we were going to vote for the Citizens District Council. And most of, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the viewers and listeners don't know that the citizens, you wanted a benefit analysis, and we already had a benefit analysis in the Citizens District Council, and they stopped using it. That's a state law. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can be in it or not. The cities can be in it. So that kind of stuff, that's what they want to do. They want to ram a lot of stuff into the charter that we're not aware of, it's bad for us. This is what the Republicans want to do, not Democrats. Democrats always sleep at the wheel. The Republicans, you got some of them Democrats and Republicans, the Republicans in the Democratic clove. That's how that goes. A lot of them. A lot of them. When you say some of them, a lot of them. All right. So that's what they want to do. Let's vote no. And we're talking about how we're going to get our children to act better and grandchildren. You got to vote down this marijuana proposal. And a lot of them are for it because they don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. We know the difference, and therefore, we got to tell them. That's it's right. It's just simple as that. Stop being your children's friend and being the adult, the parent, who you are. You're the one that brought them into the world. They didn't come in there by itself. They weren't laid on the ground by a buzzard 
and then hatched by the son. That didn't happen. So let's act like parents and tell them no, no, and no again on that proposal for the marijuana. And the young man that called in and said he's a barber, and he's absolutely right. We got to stand up and tell them. Just that simple. And we got to tell them what happened to us. What happened to your brother? What happened to your sister? It's a reason why your sister died early or your brother died early or your brother spent 20, 25 years in prison. And you don't want the same thing to happen to them. Come on, let's not stick our head in the sand and keep this foolishness going on. We got to vote no on these proposals. We got to come out and vote no. And we got to get them where the registration was over. That was yesterday. So now we got to get the people that are registered out to vote. vote. We got to talk That's about right. it at the block club meetings, these community meetings that you go to when you go to church. You need to talk about it. We got a few more calls. We're down on time. Call up. Go right ahead. Yeah. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. We don't have time long. You just got to get to your point. Well, uh, John Gallinger, Gallinger in Sunday's newspaper, he talked about the gathering of the talented 10th with the Wayne County Community College. And he said that they missed the mark because all of them was complaining about gentrification. He said the real question in Detroit is joblessness and poverty. But he, both of them was right. But they missed the one, one thing they missed was ethnic cleansing. We are constantly being forced by this city. So whatever program you have, it's not going to mean nothing for schools, voting, or anything if we are all pushed out of the city like they're pushed out of Washington, D.C., where the majority of the black people are not in Washington, D.C. You are right. Tyrone, Tyrone, call us early. You're right. Well, we got to go. We're down to the last two minutes. We want to get these little callers on the line. Call you on the line. Go right ahead. Yes, I missed the program, broadcast this morning, but when you were talking about we must teach our children to earn their money, earn their way, it reminded me of my oldest grandson. I took him on a paper route when he was 12 years old. Sunday morning, I would have to take him to pick up his papers. He would go home to fold his papers. I would go to church. I would come back from church, and I would tell him if I'm if I was right there, you start on your way. I'll be there as soon as I can. And there he would be walking. Okay. But what we found out is when he earned his money, he had to examine everything he bought. Right. With right. a microscope, right. including a donut. Okay. We got to go. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Call us early next time. Call us early. Call you the last caller. Go right ahead. Okay. So this is what I want to say. Sheree Canadar was the only candidate that actually had a plan for Michigan. Now, the other candidate took his platform and tried to make it their own, meaning the universal uh, child care, the universal free pay, pay family leave. Thank you very hours. much. Thank you very much. You have to call us earlier. Call us earlier. Call us. We're down on time. I don't know where the time go, but it flies. Uh. I'm your host, Hassan Aline. Co-host Kyle Williams. Don't forget to come out to the Hood Research Meeting this Saturday, Saturday. 2 to 6. This Saturday, 2 to 6. And uh, we'll be here every Tuesday, 10 o'clock. I mean, 9 o'clock. 9, 9 to 10. <laughs> and we got to go. So, peace. Peace.